Hi everyone, today this is Dr. Vaughn and for today, we will be discussing your uh, part 3 of your digestive system. So basically, this is just a continuation of what you had discussed with Dr. Lopez. So this is a part of the different accessory glands to your digestive system and this includes now your liver, your pancreas, and your gallbladder. Our learning objective for today will be able to at least identify the different histological components of your liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. So, alamin natin what are those different important layers in your liver as well as in the pancreas and in your gallbladder. So, first, we will start with your liver. We all know that the liver now is the largest internal organ of our human body. This weighs approximately around 1.5 kilogram and this embryology, uh, embryologically, it develops from the foregut and this spawns at the upper right and upper of the left abdominal quadrant. So as what you can see in this diagram, it is subdivided into two major lobes. You have your right lobe versus you have your left lobe. Your right lobe is much bigger compared to your left lobe and this is subdivided by your different ligaments. So the ligaments now separate your right lobe from your left lobe. So in terms of its function, your liver is also an exocrine as well as an endocrine gland. Exocrine gland because it is able to produce now the bile that emulsifies fat. Remember this, the liver produces the bile. It is not the gallbladder because the gallbladder only stores the bile that is produced by your liver. Your endocrine portion of the liver, basically because it secretes now the hormone, which is your EPO and your thrombopoietin. EPO is essential to stimulate the production of your red blood cells in your bone marrow. Your thrombopoietin, on the other hand, uh, stimulates the production of your platelets. It processes your dietary amino acids, your carbohydrates, your lipids, and vitamins as well as it synthesizes plasma proteins. This is also part of the endocrine portion now of your liver. So other functions of your liver stores carbohydrates in form of your glycogen and releases same in form of your glucose. This also now detoxifies. Remember, your liver can also detoxify and excretes bile endogenous and exogenous toxic substances and eliminates particulate materials from the blood by means of phagocytosis. Now let's proceed to the histological components of your liver. Of course, we will start first with the outermost portion of the liver. This covering here is what we term as your stroma, okay? This is now your stroma. Your stroma, on the other hand, is, is a connective tissue. This is a connective tissue, type 3 collagen, which forms now a meshwork provides the integrity of the hepatocytes and your sinusoids. Remember this, stroma, connective tissue. Automatically, it is a connective tissue. And you can identify the presence of capsule and septa to your stroma. First, let's proceed with your capsule. Your capsule is more commonly known as your Gleason's capsule. So here, nandito yung capsule natin inside your stroma. You have your thin fibroelastic capsule. It is covered now with mesothelium except for the parts that it's reflected or on the inferior surface of your diaphragm. Your septa, on the other hand, this is now a connective tissue from the capsule which penetrates now to the porta hepatis, okay? Again, the connective tissue that will penetrate to the porta hepatis or to your liver. Our birth are arborized extensively and divide liver into lobules okay coming from here coming from the outside here you have your your generally we call that as your stroma and then that's your uh capsule and then that will go intensively inside now to the liver that is what we term now your septa your septa here will divide the liver into lobules so as what you can see here it is divided into different lobules here different lobules different lobules different lobules this is now what we term as your septa okay again these are different liver lobules oh that's why it's called 
connective tissue of the lobular boundaries because this is not the septa. So remember, septa is stroma. Stroma is connective tissue. Okay? This is now your septa which divides the different liver into lobules. Okay? Branches of your hepatic artery and portal vein and the tributaries of bile duct accompany each other at the connective tissue septate. Later on, we will understand what are the portal areas, okay? I will discuss natin yan maya maya. Your stroma, again, you have your septa. Within that septa, you can also identify that different portal triads. Remember the tributaries of your portal triads. Ano yun? You have your portal vein, you have your hepatic artery, and your bile duct. Okay? Branches of your tributaries into interlobular connective tissue. Portal vein. Dito is your portal vein. We will know that that's portal vein because it's very large. And it is very large. Malaki siya and the layer is manipis. Okay? That's your portal vein. Your hepatic artery here. It's sorry, uh, green kasi siya. So we will have a better picture later on. I did differentiate natin yung portal veins, hepatic artery sa bile duct, okay? As of now, this is now your portal vein, your hepatic artery and your bile duct, okay? <clears throat> okay, see this one. This is the bigger, bigger picture. This is now the components of your portal triad, okay? This is your portal triad. So what you can see, this is now the portal vein. Portal vein had a bigger lumen in comparison to the hepatic artery and to the bile duct. Now, how can you differentiate your hepatic artery to your bile duct? Your hepatic artery has many layers, has, has, uh, sorry, has a thicker wall layer compared to your portal vein. But your bile duct, you can say that this is the bile duct because this is lined by simple cuboidal. If it's simple cuboidal, then you can say that that is your bile duct. Hepatic artery... A thicker wall layer compared to your portal vein, a uh, lesser wall layer, but it has a greater diameter of your lumen. Okay? So again, again, mas magandang tingnan. Again, this is now your portal vein. Sorry, your uh, your portal vein, which is bigger. Manipis yung wall layer. And then, this is now your bile duct. Paano natin malalaman na this is the bile duct? Because this has a simple cuboidal lining epithelium. Tignan nyo, cube-like cells, cube cells here. Dito naman, manipis, uh, sorry, a uh, thicker wall compared here. Thicker wall but is smaller in diameter. This is now your hepatic artery. Again, that is now your portal triad. When I ask, what is the composition of your portal triad? Remember, Portal vein, hepatic artery, and your bile duct. Most of the students got it wrong because they answer central vein. Again, portal vein is different from the central vein. This is not synonymous, okay? Please do not be mistaken with that. It should be portal vein, not central vein. So, next component is the parenchyma, okay? We've done with the stroma. Let's proceed with the parenchyma. Your parenchyma is composed of liver cells or your hepatocytes, okay? Your liver cells or your hepatocytes now is 80% of the cell population of the liver. So when I ask, in the entire population of the cell, sorry, in the entire population of the cell, majority is actually, majority is actually hepatocytes. So ito, these are your hepatocyte, hepatocyte, these cells are hepatocyte, hepatocytes, hepatocyte, hepatocyte. So halos lahat dito are your hepatocyte kasi nga 80% are your hepatocytes. Perform all metabolic and secretory functions of the liver. That is now the function of your hepatocyte. They can have a function in terms of their exocrine, in terms of its endocrine function, okay? So, how will we know that that is now your hepatocyte? Very easy to identify, correct? This is your hepatocyte. This is your hepatocyte. You know that the nucleus could be one or two. It could be one or two only. And you see they are round or polypoid in terms of their shape. They could be round or polypoid, okay? And they have, as what you can see here at the middle, you can see a very prominent nucleoli, okay? This is the nucleus. Inside that, you can identify the nucleoli, okay? The cytoplasm, on the other hand here, 
it's very abundant, grainy, and eosinophilic with numerous organelles. Of course, we cannot see it clearly here because you need a specialized microscope for that. Next, we have your lateral surfaces or your uh, your uh, you have a lateral surfaces which will adjoin the hepatocytes to form now your bile canaliculus. Okay, again, these are liver hepatocytes, another liver hepatocytes. Okay, and lateral surfaces adjoining your hepatocytes will form now your bile canaliculus. Okay, so this is now your bile canaliculus. Again, this green portion here is your bile canaliculus. It is formed by the lateral surfaces adjoining now your hepatocyte. I hope that is clear. So, this is your hepatocyte. This is your hepatocyte. The lateral surfaces of your hepatocyte forms now your bile canaliculus. Your sinusoids. So, this green portion here are your sinusoids. These sinusoids are capillaries traveling between your hepatocytes. This is lined by your endothelium that has two types of cells. You have your endothelial cells, okay? This is now your sinusoids. So again, your sinusoids, which are capillaries traveling between your hepatocytes, okay? Dito yung dumadaan yung ating mga capillaries. This is in between also your hepatocytes. So your sinusoids, dito yung area ng ating mga sinusoids, your sinusoids, sinusoids here, Yung sinusoids natin, two other functionally important cells are found within the sinusoid. So, may dalawang important cells. Una-una, you have your copper cells here. Again, this is your sinusoids here. This is your sinusoids and sinusoids. Very important cells that you can identify is your copper cells. Ano ba yung copper cells, Doc Fon? Your copper cells or what we term as your stellate cells or your antigen-presenting cells or your APCs. This is your copper cells, your copper cells. What's the function of your copper cells? They are macrophages. Therefore, they remove any bacteria or any debris present in the portal, uh, portal blood. So, again, they just act as your macrophage. So, you can identify your copper cells. Again, this picture will show us your copper cells. Itong, itong kulay black na ito. These are your copper cells. Copper cells are seen as black cells in a liver, uh, in a, your liver lobule stained via India ink. So, if you use your specialized stain, India ink, you can identify now your copper cells. They will be stained as black cells, okay? Your other cells now is what we term as your hepatic cells or your E2 cells. Itong mga maliliit na to, ito yung tinatawag natin na E2 cells. Again, hepatic stellate cells or your E2 cells. With small lipid droplets that store vitamin A and other fat-soluble vitamins. So remember that. I guess this is uh, high yield question, uh, high yield uh, information because this actually come out in the examination. I forgot if it's a medicine pa to or it's a medtech question. So there was a question: a uh, small lipid droplet that store your vitamin A and other fat soluble vitamins. The correct answer here now is your E2 cells or your hepatic salate cells. Okay. Produces now your extracellular matrix, component, and cytokines that can help regulate the copper cell activity. That's another function now of your stellate cells or your E2 cells, okay? I want you to remember your space of DC, okay? This portion now is your space of DC. What is that space or DC or your peri perisinusoidal space? Your perisinusoidal space, which are located between the hepatocyte and the sinusoid. So, medyo mahirap siya, no? Parang kung tingnan nyo, parang na siyang bile canaliculi, parang na siyang sinusoid, medyo mahirap talaga siyang ma-identify, okay? Again, your perisinusoidal space or your space of DC, just remember the description, located between the hepatocyte, between your hepatocyte and your sinusoids. This contains now collagenous, and reticular fibers and your microvilli of your hepatocytes. So, we have a better picture for that. So, again, this is now your hepatocytes. Okay, this portion now is your hepatocytes. And this is now your area here is your sinusoids. Okay, this is now your sinusoids and this is now your space of DC. Remember, 
located between the hepatocytes. This is now your hepatocytes and the sinusoids. And this is now your sinusoids, okay? Remember, your sinusoids is lined by your endothelial cells. Ito, your sinusoids, sina nyo, this portion here is your sinusoids. They are lined by your endothelial cell. But your space of this here, this is located in between your hepatocyte. This portion here is your hepatocyte. And in between your sinusoid. Ito naman yung sinusoid natin, correct? So, nasa gitna niyan, ito yung ating space of DC. Better picture here. Again, this is your sinusoid here. Remember, your sinusoids contains now your cup for cells. Ito yung ating cup for cells, right? And your, your sinusoid is lined by your endothelial cells. So, malalaman natin siya na yan yung sinusoid kasi nga, they are lined by your endothelial cell. And in between your sinusoid, gitna ng ating hepatocytes and your sinusoid, nakikita natin yung you can identify now your space of DC. You can identify your space of DC. So your space of DC also contains your perisinusoidal cells of ito. Okay, again, your space of DC can also contain the cells of ito. Okay, lymph drained from your DC drains into the space of mold. Remember, lymph will drain from the DC drains into the space of mold. So you hear your space of mold. On the other hand, this is now a periportal space or tatawag natin a space of mold where lymph is produced and is sandwiched between now your connective tissue of the portal canals and the hepatocyte. Okay? Ito na yun. Again, your space of mold. Saan kaya? Dito yung ating space of mold. Dito, here, this is now your space of mold. Again, this is a periportal space. A periportal. We term that as a periportal because you can locate your space of mold within your portal triad. Tingnan nyo, this is the portal vein, this is the hepatic artery, and this is the bile duct. So you can actually locate here your space of mold. That's why we term that as your periportal space where lymph is produced. This is now sandwiched between the connective tissue of the portal canals and the hepatocytes. So sandwiched between the hepatocytes. So this is the hepatocytes and your connective tissue of your portal canal. So this is the connective tissue of the portal canals. This is the hepatocyte. And in between that, you can locate your space of mold. Okay? So again, here, this is now your connective tissue. This is the connective tissue of your uh, portal triad. And you can identify there your space of mold. In between, so this portion is the hepatocyte. This area now is the connective tissue part of the portal triad. So therefore, here will be most likely to be the space of mold or the periportal space. Okay? I hope that is clear. Again, no? This is the portal vein. Very thin walled. This is a very big lumen and thin walled. This is the bile duct. You know that that's the bile duct because it is simple cuboidal. You know that this is hepatic artery because in comparison now, lesser lumen or lesser diameter in terms of its lumen and lesser wall compared to your portal vein. Ay, sorry, thicker walled. It is thicker walled compared now to your portal vein. Okay? So again, this will just show us a very a nice diagrammatic diagram of the space of mall and your D cell. Okay? This is now the periportal space or or the space of mall here, you can see in between the connective tissue of the portal triad and your hepatocytes, okay? Okay, I want you to learn these concepts on architecture of the liver. Uh, you have your classic hepatic lobule, you have your portal lobule, and your hepatic sinus. Again, concept here should be viewed as complementary, uh, complementary, not conflicting. So, this will enter. Uh, this will be the interpretation of the different structure of liver. Depende siya, okay? 
First, you have your classic hepatic lobule. Next, you have your portal lobule and you have your portal asinus, okay? Classic hepatic lobule drains blood from the portal vein and the hepatic artery to the hepatic or to the central vein, okay? Ito na yung ating tinatawag na central vein or your hepatic vein. Please remember, hepatic vein or central vein is not synonymous to portal vein. It's different, ha? That's a different vein. Please remember that. When you say classic hepatic lobule, this portion here, you can actually identify the middle central venule, okay? Locate for the central vein and it is surrounded by your portal triad, okay? It is support, uh, surrounded by your portal triad. This is now your classic hepatic lobule. Lobules here is based on the concept that your central vein is located at the center or at the middle and surrounded by your portal triad, different portal triad, okay? Remember that. That's your classic hepatic lobule. Your portal lobule, on the other hand, remember, they drain bile from the hepatocyte to the bile duct. What is the concept? Okay? At the middle portion, you can locate here the portal triad. So, it's different now to the classic hepatic lobule because what's in the center here? It's the central vein or the hepatic vein. Here, at the center is the portal triad but surrounded by your central vein. Surrounded by your central vein vein or your hepatic vein. It forms now a triangle. That's your portal lobule. Here, it forms like your uh, your hexagon, okay? On the other hand, your portal asinus, which supplies oxygenated blood to the hepatocyte, their, their concept naman, their architectural concept, it looks like a diamond. As what you can see, there's no middle portion. At the tip portion, you can locate the central vein and uh, the Different corners, you can uh, locate now your portal triad. So, no, it looks like a diamond. So, let's try to discuss this one by one. So, again, this is now your portal triad. Uh, sorry, this is now your hepatic lobule. It's polyglonal in shape. No? Polyglonal, this portion here, polygonal. Uh, and your central vein here occupies at the center of the lobule. Your hepatic uh, plates contains now the hepatocytes which radiates outward. So, record, this is now your hepatocytes at the middle portion also, okay? Your portal area with portal triad presents in three corners of each of the lobules. So, again, it, it is not always perfect six, okay? Hindi siya dapat uh, at the corners. It's not usually you can get the entire portal triad. You can get the all portal triads. You can identify all the portal triads, okay? That's a portal triad, that's a portal triad, and this portal triad here, okay? Letter M here is actually missing. The clue word here, M here is missing. My point here is that it's not necessarily that you can have the portal triads in each corner of your of your polygonal, polygonal, okay? It's not necessarily to have the portal triad. You can have two to three portal triads present. So, letter M here is actually missing. Missing portal triad, okay? Again, it's not necessarily you have the portal triads at the corners. Your central area, <coughs> sorry. Your portal lobule, on the other hand, uh, what is your portal lobule? Central area is occupied by the portal area, okay? Central area is occupied by the portal area. So, this is the portal triad. Locate first the portal triad. If it's surrounded by your central vein, then that's now your portal lobule. That represents now your portal lobule. So, this is now your portal triad surrounded by your central vein. No? This one is very big. This also and this also. That's your central vein, okay? Within the portal lobule, blood flows from the center to the periphery while glandular secretion flows from the periphery to the center of your lobule, okay? Your hepatic sinus, again, remember hepatic sinus, it looks like a diamond, yo? Your hepatic sinus regarded by many as a true anatomical and functional unit of the liver, smaller than classical and hepatic lobule and your portal lobule, and these are ellipsoidal. Ano yung sabi ko? 
You cannot locate no structures at the middle, but rather you can identify portal triad at the corners and central vein also at the corners. But again, not necessarily you will have a full-blown portal triad. You can locate other portal triad. Letter M here stands for missing, okay? But I want you to remember these very important concepts. Your hepatic, so, uh, your hepatic asinus can be divided into three zones. So remember this portion here. This portion here. Okay? This is now your hepatic sinus. It is further subdivided into different zones. Zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. Once it is near zone, uh, once it's near the blood vessel here, remember, your portal triad contains now your artery, your vein, your, uh, your duct. So it contains now your artery here. Once it is near your portal triad, remember this, once it's near the portal triad, it is zone 1 because it is more oxygenated. Compared to zone 2, zone 2 here, this portion here, that is now at the middle portion between zone 1 and zone 2. Your zone 3, on the other hand, it is farther from your portal triad because it will contains now it is now lesser oxygenation. Okay? Remember that. Sorry. So again, remember this one, ha? Zone 1, this is closest to the portal triad and it is more oxygenated. Zone 2, it is found between zone 1 and zone 3. And zone 3, farthest from the blood vessel and therefore, this is less oxygenated. So again, let's identify is this zone 1, zone 2, or zone 3? Again, identify what is here in the middle. This is central vein. What is this portion here? This is your portal triad, right? This is the portal triad. Now, question, is this zone 1, zone 2, or zone 3? This is zone 3. This is zone 3 because it is farther from the portal triad. And it is more nearer than the central vein. And this is now lesser oxygenated okay this portion here very easy at the middle portion this is zone 2 this one near your portal triad therefore this is now your zone 3 very good okay let's proceed with your pancreas okay i guess we already done discussing your pancreas in terms of the endocrine portion of your pancreas so we will be discussing more of the exocrine portion of your pancreas so your pancreas is an elongated portion or organ which lies obliquely across the posterior abdominal wall at the level of the l1 and l2 of your vertebral body so this is now your pancreas as what you can see your pancreas will be subdivided into different parts you have the tail portion which hits your spleen you have your body and your head which occupies now at the um, at the duodenal portion of your intestine okay so <clears throat> we also know that your pancreas is also both an exocrine and an endocrine portion i guess we've done with the, discussing the endocrine portion now of your pancreas so in terms of its histological components the stroma you also have your stroma remember stroma connective tissue your stroma can have the capsule, which is a thin layer of connective tissue, and your septa now will divide the gland into the indistinct globule. Similar with your liver, right? Your septa also, or your septum, will divide the liver into different liver lobules, but it is very distinct, or you can clearly see that. In comparison to your liver and to your pancreas, divide the gland into indistinct globules. So again, these are now the different lobules of your pancreas so this is divided by your uh, septa your parenchyma con can also contains a different glandular epithelium so we already know about this one that the endocrine portion is only two percent and this is represented by the islets of longer hand so this portion now here is the islet of longer hand yung may mga arrow you uh, black arrow that represents now your islets of longer hand your exocrine portion, on the other hand, this is a compound tubuloalveolar gland. This secretes a pancreatic juices that is important 
in the digestion of different body substances such as your protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Okay? So, those uh, purple colored or darkly colored or darkly stained uh, part that is now actually the exocrine portion in comparison to the lighter stain endocrine portion. So, it occupies 98% of the uh, lobule and uh, has a secretory portions are called your pancreatic acyanide. So, remember this. This is now your pancreatic acyanus. This is now your pancreatic. So, again, this is the islets of longer hand endocrine portion. This portion now here is your exocrine portion. It is represented by your pancreatic acyanai. So you can have different pancreatic acyanai. This one here is now your pancreatic acyanus. And this pancreatic acyanus contains the different cells and what we term as your acyanar cells. Okay? These are closely packed cloculumnar or pyramidal cells. They rest now are your basal lamina. And what is the function of these acyanar cells? They synthesize now the enzymatic components of your pancreatic juice. So they are the one that is responsible to secrete the different enzymes responsible for our digestive uh, part of our digestion, okay? Sa ating digestive system. Remember, your pancreatic amylase, your pancreatic lipase, your pancreatic trypsins. These are very important for the digestion of your different components of your uh, uh, body substances, okay? Again, this is now your pancreatic acyanus contained by your acyanar cells. Again, how can we identify your pancreatic acyanus? They are half a round with one or more nuclei present. Please remember these different ducts. You have your intralobular ducts, which compose of your intercalated ducts, which drains your acyanus. Again, what drains your acyanus here is what we term now your intercalated duct. Okay, these are squamous or low capital epithelium. And your interlobular ducts, on the other hand, this is now the union of your intercalated ducts. Again, what drains your acyanus here is your intercalated duct. The union of this intercalated duct is what we term as your interlobular ducts. Okay? And the union of your interlobular ducts is what we term as your pancreatic ducts. You can identify that that's your pancreatic duct because it is lined now by a simple columnar epithelium. Okay? So again, this is now your assigner cells. Your assigner cells, what drains your assigner cells is your intercalated duct. So this portion now here is your intercalated ducts. And your, the union of your intercalated ducts is what we term as your interlobular duct. So again, the union now of your intercalated ducts, that is now actually your interlobular ducts. I hope that is clear. Okay, let's proceed now to the last organ, last important organ. You have your gallbladder. Okay, your gallbladder here, this is your gallbladder. This is a pear shape that is found at the inferior surface or inferior aspect of your right lobe of your liver. So behind or below the liver or the inferior portion of the liver, you can actually locate your gallbladder. So what will be the function now of your liver, of your gallbladder, sorry? This collect, store, concentrate, and expel bile when it is needed for emulsification of fat. Bile is continually produced by liver hepatocyte and it's transported via excretory ducts to the gallbladder for storage. Again, the main function now is basically to store and concentrate your bile coming from the liver. So what are the different histological components now of your liver? So the liver will have different layers also similar with other digestive system. We'll start first with your mucosa. You have your muscular layer. You also have your serosa and your adventitia. Hmm. Look, Vaughn, there is no submucosa. This is very unique also to your gallbladder because your gallbladder does not contain muscularis mucosae and also does not contain your submucosa. Again, these are the basic histological components of your gallbladder. You have your mucosa, you have your muscularis layer or your muscularis externa, and you have your adventitia. The gallbladder is a muscular sac. It consists of your, again, mucosa, muscularis externa, and your adventitia and sarosa. Take note, 
it does not contain any muscularis mucosae or even your submucosa. Let's start first with your mucosa. This portion here is now your mucosa. This is your gallbladder, the mucosa of your gallbladder. It's grossly with anastomosing folds, okay? Epithelial lining, it's simple, columnar with microvilli. You will know that this is your gallbladder because it does not contain any goblet cells, okay? No goblet cells present, therefore, this is now your gallbladder. It's simple, columnar. The lamina propria of your here, this portion here, the lamina propria is also devoid of true glands except the simple tubuloalveolar glands that is found at the mucosal neck of your, uh, mucous neck of your, or in the neck portion of your gallbladder. Please remember that. Again, they do not have any true glands, but they only have, but except a simple tubuloalveolar glands that secrete mucus and the neck portion of your gallbladder, okay? So as what you can see here, the mucosal folds here resembles the villi in the small intestine. However, they vary in size and shape and displays an irregular arrangement. So this is very confusing on the part of your small intestine because if you view this one overview, you have an, uh, uh, going to check the slide, you will check, ah, it, it looks like a small intestine because this looks like a villi, right? But how can we know that it is not, this is not a, a small intestine? By the fact that the the folds here are very irregular, unlike in your small intestine. What else? Because the lining, yes, it may be simple columnar with microvilli also, but it does not have any goblet cells, okay? That's how you differentiate now your the mucosa of your gallbladder to your small intestine. Your mucosa also contains your Rokitansky ascov sinuses. This portion here is now your Rokitansky ascov. This is also located in the mucosa of your gallbladder. It is an epithelial invagination or in pocketings or diverticula into the lamina propria and the muscle layer. Again, not glandular in nature. Okay? This is now your Rokitansky ascov sinuses. Now, I would like to ask you some question. What will be the importance of your Rokitansky ascov sinuses? This will be my maybe part of my examination. I will add part that of my final exam. Okay, I will ask what's the purpose of your Rokitansky ascov sinuses? What is the clinical importance of your Rokitansky ascov sinuses? Okay, the next layer is the muscular layer. So this is now the muscular layer. The muscular layer is poorly defined, inner, mostly longitudinal oriented fibers, outer, mostly, um, you have inner, again, inner, longitudinal, longitudinally oriented fibers, you have outer, which is mostly circularly oriented muscles, okay? Please take note of that. Again, inner, longitudinally oriented, outer, mostly circularly, circularly oriented muscle. You know, circularly oriented, ito is longitudinally oriented, okay? So, uh, your cholecytokinin is produced by the ento, uh, entero endocrine cells of your small intestine. So, this can induce contraction now of your smooth muscle. So, again, remember, your small intestine will produce cholecystokinin. This cholecystokinin now will induce the contraction of your smooth muscle. That is why it will now trigger the release of your gallbladder. So, again, remember this. You have fats in your stomach or your small intestine. These fats now will stimulate the production of your cholecystokinin. This cholecystokinin will induce the contraction now of the smooth muscle here of our gallbladder. This in turn produces or, or so not produces but rather releases the gallbladder. Okay? Uh, sorry, releases the bile because your bile is important to emulsify the fat. Okay? Very good. Okay, the outermost portion here, you have now your adventitia or serosa. That will now depend on the surface area. Serosa is located over the posterior and inferior surface of the gallbladder. Your adventitia now is in the surface associated with the liver. So, the outermost part layer here, if this is in contact with the liver, that is what we term your adventitia. If it is in contact with the posterior and inferior surface, that is now your serosa. Please do not be confused with that. Okay? Sige.
that ends our lecture. If you have any questions or clarification, please do not hesitate to message me, okay? Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.